Hey, it's Greg with rcdriver.com and see this machine in front of me? I know a lot of you have been waiting for this video. It's the Mini Pro Motor Dyno. A couple weeks ago, I threw up a video of an unboxing of this thing. Showed you the cool aluminum uh, flywheel case here and the electronics board uh, and, and everything that it comes with. Uh, and, and I basically took the time to, to set it up nice and neat as you see it right here. Wanted to you know really show off this piece of equipment because it's a really cool piece. Uh, so I have everything set up. Got it hooked up to my laptop. Why am I holding you guys up? Let's go over to the workbench and check out what this thing does. All right, so let me go over a few details on what I did to get the Mini Pro Dyno ready. Uh, first up, as you can see, I cut a small piece of plywood here to act as the base for everything. Just wanted to make everything look nice and neat. Got a couple of felt feet under here just to dampen any vibration. So I went and then um, uh, attached the base plate to the dyno flywheel itself. Uh, all that hardware is included to do that. Even gives you the screws to mount it to a, a base plate such as this piece of plywood here. Next up, I ran the voltage sensor, uh, the current sensor uh, wire from here over to the, the wires. And I did have to solder on the included Dean's plugs. Uh, they don't they don't solder them at the factory because uh, you know if you want to use a different style plug they give you that option so i did solder in the deans as you see it these two are included and i had to uh, find a, a battery adapter for my racing pack here uh, over here i have the esc sensor so this can run on uh, just using your radio system you could hook it up to your receiver and manually pull the throttle in order to spool up the motor uh, I opted to go with the ESC sensor. Uh, it's just, I don't know, being a tech guy, it's really cool to have your computer control that. So its readings are consistent uh, each and every time you spool it up. And it's it's really cool. It's some, when you get into the functionality of it, you could adjust uh, when you want the, the motor to ramp up. So it's a really neat item to have. I mean, it's I believe it's only $30 on the website. For an additional $30, uh, this this sensor here is is gold to have. Uh, so that's really about it. Uh, as you can see, it's just standard hookup for the, the speed controller as you would hook it up in your buggy or truck or whatever. Uh, the, the temperature sensor is included with there, so I, I ran it around back here over to the motor. You do need uh, two ports on your laptop or computer in order to hook up the speed controller sensor. Uh, and the flywheel sensor or the flywheel bo electronics board here. So just keep that in mind. Uh, make sure you have two open ports on your laptop. Let's bring the computer over so I could just kind of show you what the interface or the uh, the program looks like here. So here is the, the base screen that you see. Uh, we've got uh, some information here. This is where your graphs will read out. Once you hook up your, your speed controller and your motor, you will have to calibrate the speed controller so the computer recognize it if you do go that route, uh, which is uh, fairly easy to do. You just pop open the screen here. You put your speed controller into uh, setup mode, and then you go through the process here, setting your neutral, your throttle, your brake. And every speed controller is different, so you, know, you have to read your instructions and see what uh, you know steps to take in order to... Uh, set up your speed controller. Once your particular speed controller is set up, all you have to do to come back in and uh, make sure it's connected is uh, after you set it up, let me just close the screen out here. You have to come over here, make sure it's connected. And once it's connected, you can activate the speed controller. And once you do that, you can just do a quick test and make sure everything's hooked up before you do your runs. All right, let's uh, let me reset everything here, and I will show you what a run looks like on this. All right, so I've repositioned everything here, and I could just come over here. I've, my speed control is already activated. I'm going to go over into auto plotting, and I'm going to set up. Just it's all ready to go. I just have to click uh, one run. Brings it up to twenty percent throttle. And so now you could come to your graph here and read uh, what the motor did. So the red graph here, the uh, line graph, is current. The green line here is voltage. And the blue line is RPM. Now you could you could make a tweak to your motor, or you could just come back in and check consistency. Let's see what it does for run two.
And I'll come back and do a third run. All right, so as you do each run, the um, the line colors do change. So we've got the different colors so you could easily identify which run was what. And uh, then you could go over here. We have a, a chart so you could see a chart of what happened. And what's really cool is you could go and print this out. You could save the chart and then you could come over here to the summary results. And here's where you could really see that data broken down. You can see the breakdown of uh, the torque, max power, voltage, current, power out, temperature, max efficiency, max temperature. And you can see that for all the runs right here. So I can certainly see the Mini Pro Dyno being a valuable tool to racers that want to get the most out of their motor. Quality of the machine itself is excellent and there is a lot of information in the program. But the review isn't over yet. I actually boxed up the Mini Pro Dyno and sent it out to one of my buddies. And he's actually one of the fastest racers on the RC drag racing circuit, Tim Smith. He's certainly a racer that needs to know what his motors are doing. So I thought it would be great to get his opinion and some more information on the dyno directly from a pro racer. Let's see what Tim has to say. Okay, thanks Greg. And uh, so this is the Mini Pro Dyno setup. And what you basically get is the Mini Pro system with the flywheel, a mount for the motor, and uh, I have the interface that allows the computer to talk to the speed control. Speed control obviously, and the motor you have to provide yourself and the battery. So we've got everything hooked up here. This is the software, and real quick, I'll talk about a couple of simple things about it. When you first start the software, you're gonna come over here and you're gonna find your right COM port and you're gonna connect, which we've already done. So it's all connected and ready to go. Everyone's talking to each other, so it's all perfect. Now in here, I can see RPM, I can click it to KV, I can switch around to uh, running amps or freeze the amps in the voltage. It's not really running 78 volts. I just don't have the voltage regulator hooked up right now. And then this is the screen. So we're gonna make a run real quick on it. And then we're gonna look at some of the data and explain some of the things you can do to the data. Now the cool thing about this is I'm gonna go in here to options and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna look at the speed control settings. Now what I've done is I've set up my run to where it's gonna go to 20% throttle for five seconds and then it'll go full throttle for seven seconds. That kind of gives the motor a, the ability to get into an RPM band and then put load on it all the way up to full throttle and uh, we'll see what kind of data we get from that. So there it is. So it's in there. Let's activate the speed control. The speed control is activated. Now we're going to go over here to our auto run and we're going to make run one and I'll just click this and it should take off. You can see it's got real-time RPM and real-time on the screen as it goes through the run. And so as it winds down, you can see we've got this graph on here. And what this graph is telling us is the blue line is actually the torque of the motor, and I can see where the peak torque is and where the peak power is, and under what point of the uh, RPM band, which it looks like it was around 6,000 RPM, somewhere in that range, right in there. Now you can do a few things with this. You can manipulate the screen in a, in a few different ways. I can right click on it, and you have several different options. We can go down here and we can go to 3D mode. It gives us a little easier way to look at it. Um, we can also look at some different styles of charts. Right now I have the torque and the power output versus RPM. Basically, this just tells me how much power this motor has under load as it goes. But I can switch it to RPM versus time, and this will just give me the RPM build over the whole time frame. Let's take current out of there. And so this is the RPM build, and you can see it's 15, 20,000, just above 20,000 RPM before the motor starts to flatten out and run. And how I do these things is I'll look at this kind of number here. This is a 17.5 motor on two cells. But I'll look at this number here for drag racing at 20,000 RPM. I'll assume what mile an hour I want and I build my gear ratio off of this point right here. And so let's do one more run and we'll see how well they compete with each other. So we'll do run two. Let me uh, get that ready. And run two. And we'll hit. 
build. As you can see, the yellow and the blue run, they're very close to each other because we made no changes to the motor whatsoever. Now I can also go over here and I can left click and drag across and grab all of this like that and then I can get a, a larger, cl more close in view of it. Now what I would do at this point with this motor is, I would actually go to the motor, I would adjust the timing a tiny bit, maybe add a degree or two or take out a degree or two make the same run again, and then I can compare it to what I have. Essentially, I can just work up to where I get the most power out of this motor off of whatever RPM it likes the most, or whatever timing. Okay, so real quick, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how adjusting the timing can affect this and how you can see it. So this was the run we just made with the timing. You can see the band in there. So right now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take a little timing out of the motor, and let's see how it reacts on the screen so you can see visually what the dyno can show you. Okay, so it's all set. So let's make one more run, run two. And let's see what we get out on our readout, close to the other one. So you can see here now, after I took about four degrees of timing out of it, see how the motor fell off on RPM and power. It's far below, this was almost near 22,000 RPM, and this time we barely made it to 20,000. We lost 2,000 RPM, and that's, that's the basics of how you're gonna use a system like this. You're gonna make an adjustment, you're gonna take a reading, and you just continue to try to improve that adjustment in any way you can. So I wanted to show you that, the simple way of how to use one of these dynos and what you can use them for in any kind of motor application. That's the Mini Pro, and uh, to me it's a really beautiful, solid piece of machinery. It runs very smooth. The software is incredible. It gives you more information than maybe you can even take in. And I'll tell you to me, the key with dynos, I've built my own dynos and used this one to some extent. The real key is learning how to use the data it gives you. They're all gonna run a motor, they're all gonna give you information and data but it really comes down to how you learn the data. So even this dyno, you may have to make 20, 30 runs before you start seeing how the data works, how the flow works, and then you can make your adjustments and see how much it improved it or didn't improve it. But as far as a tuning aid goes for an RC motor, to me, there's nothing better than a pure flywheel dyno like this. So if you're looking for a way to tune your motors, uh, the Mini Pro Dyno is definitely worth looking at. So I think Tim liked the dyno as well. Like I said, I can certainly see this being a valuable tool for racers that want to get the most out of their equipment. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you haven't done so yet, please click that subscribe button, maybe throw us a like. And in the description down below, I have some links to Tim Smith's social media pages. I suggest you give them a follow.